Hey everybody, I'm Rick Beato. Dave Honorado. And I missed the black t-shirt memo. Yes, you did. It looks kind of weird, I know, but You're there's getting, nothing we can do. This is our first Three fun. Amigos session of 2021 yes. and 2020. Yeah, yeah it's been since, a, over a year Since and a 2019. Yeah. We've actually been talking about this, the topic we're going to talk about, but it's kind of a thought experiment, the kind of thing that I like to sit around and talk with my friends about. Let's say, who's more famous, Jimi Hendrix or Eric Clapton? Hendrix. Uh, Hendrix. Dave hesitated on that. I would probably say Hendrix, too. Yeah. But why did you hesitate, Dave? Um, well, kind of the career span of like, you know, Hendrix was only around for, you know, a short period of time. And then, you know, obviously Eric's been decades. So, but I'd say Hendrix just because of, you know, his iconic status of even, even people who don't know about his music can probably recognize maybe who he is. So, yeah. yeah. And even with Clapton's much longer catalog, even if you cut Clapton off at 70, yeah, 1970, Hendrix still oh yeah had a wider breadth of impact than uh, than Clapton did. I think so. Between Led Zeppelin and Pink Floyd, who's the more famous group? Zeppelin. <laughs> Zeppelin. Yeah. Yeah. I mean Pink Floyd's huge and they're massively influential, but what rock groups exist that are bigger than Zeppelin? I mean there's less than two or three. I mean, the only thing I could say to that is, I mean, Pink Floyd did have one of the biggest selling records of all time, so. True. But I'd have to say, yeah, I'd have to say Zeppelin as a whole. Just as a, as a more cumulative impact? Yeah. I mean, yeah, Dark Side of the Moon was massive. I mean, that was, you know. Everyone knows Dark Side of the right. Moon. Right. So, but, you know, everybody knows Stare with Heaven, so it's kind of like, you know, or, or multiple Zeppelin songs. But, um, yeah, I'd, I'd have to go with Zeppelin just as a whole. Who is a, a better singer? <laughs> Mick Jagger or David Bowie? Bowie. Boy, man, that's tough. Um, hmm, man, I, I'll go with Jagger. Well, how are you quantifying better? Though? Okay. Yeah. All right. This is. Let's get into this thing because <laughs> this is interesting. I think, from a technical perspective, Bowie's the better singer. Definitely, no would, question about yeah, it. Yeah, no question. From yes, from a, a tone perspective, from a immediately recognizable perspective, I would put them both neck and neck. You don't you don't mistake Bowie's voice. You certainly don't mistake Jagger's voice when you hear it. Right. Yeah, I mean Bowie was huge, and I love Bowie, but I, I you know I'd have to say Jagger though because. I don't know about better though. That's the thing. Yeah, it's, like, it's I don't know if the band's influence has an impact on the on the question of who's the better singer. Yeah, one of my favorite Rolling Stones songs is "Happy," which actually <laughs> Keith Richards <laughs> sings lead on until the chorus. Okay, no, I'm a massive Rolling Stones I, fan, <laughs> and Jagger's one of my favorite singers ever. But you don't realize how good of a singer. Mick Jagger is until he comes in in the chorus on that song. And then you're thinking, you're like, God, this is a killer song, amazing. And then you're like, oh, wait a minute. That's yeah. actually Keith Richards singing on the verse. And Jagger comes in, and you realize, oh, my God, Jagger's in a phenomenal singer. You just kind of take it for granted. Yeah, so no, good. I agree, yeah. And, and Keith Richards is a pretty good singer, yeah, I think. That's yeah. He, yeah, he nailed it on that one. I mean, really. Okay, okay, if you were... <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 yeah. David Bowie. Well... <sighs> I mean, maybe, yeah, range-wise, technique, obviously, yes. Yeah, I chops-wise, mean, chops, David Bowie, there's no right. comparison between the Even two. arrangements and, and just the way he layered so, his stuff. And, yeah, yeah. I, but but uh, coolness? I still th I still got to say Bowie. I mean, look, there, it's, coolness is a completely different... That's a different question altogether. Yeah. I would put the two right in line with one of each other when you're... But how do you even quantify coolness? I mean, to me, this this one's basically throw a dart. Yeah, this is one a, that's a, a tie. It, it really, I think yeah. it is. This is a tie, I mean, right? Yeah, the coolness thing is a tie, but Bowie's a better singer. Who's more famous, Sting or Eddie Van Halen? Wow. Okay, both came out in 1978. In 1978, they were equally famous because Roxanne was massive, and so was Running with the Devil. Yeah. When it came out, both both bands were huge. Uh, the Police were pretty much 
I'd say worldwide by the by nineteen by synchronicity, probably were a bigger band than Van Halen. Mm -hmm. uh, worldwide, yeah. Worldwide, I would, I would say it's worldwide, yeah, yeah, plus, definitely at that point. Plus Sting's solo career. Yes. Yeah. On right. top of sure the police. Sure. Um, that's a real hard thing because there's a very little overlap between uh, right. stylistically between and, them. And think about like commercial success. Think about radio play. I mean, think about yeah all the aspects of more famous. I mean, you know, but I mean, th but Van Halen was famous worldwide too. Yeah, and you could still go and say, hey man, you know, even with Sammy, they had huge songs and huge hits up until the mid '90s. You know, so I'd have to go. I'll, I'll go with Police though because. Well, he said Sting. Or Sting. Sting. Well, oh, yeah. Sting. Not the police. Well, Sting and not Van Halen, the band, but Eddie. Sting versus Eddie. <laughs> oh, man. Well, <laughs> geez. That's. Well, see, I, I, as a guitar player. I don't know. They're, they're equal. As a guitar player, though. No, gonna... be objective, though. You have to be objective, right? Because <laughs> I, we're all guitar I, players. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. Um, I know. Well, Sting, you know, to me, Sting was unbelievably influential. I think that Sting's. Influence, and I made a video why Sting is uncopyable. I think his influence is that people don't even realize how influential that he was. Yeah, yeah. If the police came out now, if you heard a song like Roxanne, it would be a hit. King of Pain, they would be hits. These, yeah. The police yeah. songs were so weird that they would still be hits. We've talked about that before yeah, here, yeah. that they would be hits today, I think. And they're, it's one of the few groups from that time period that, that to me, doesn't sound doesn't sound out of place today. Yeah, God, I love the police. I, so it's Sting for me. I think it's Sting. <laughs> I say tie. I'll go with tie. I guess. That's... Are we doing ties though? For real? I ties. ties. Yeah, ties okay. work. All right. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Maybe you get one tie. Okay. Around. All right. That, well, that will be. Yeah. That's okay. So tie. Dave, so, now your turn. All right. Well, I'm going to come out of left field completely. <laughs> way out there. <laughs> like that wasn't. <laughs> well, no. This is going to. No. This is completely different. Okay. Um, who built? The cooler guitar, the homemade guitar, Brian May or Van Halen? Oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> well, Van Halen's was the most copied, so I'd say Van Halen. Even though Brian May's was incredibly oh, cool. Oh, dude, yeah, the Red Special. I, yeah. I gotta go Red Special. For me, believe it or not, yeah, it's Red Special for a couple of reasons. Uh, you know, Van Halen bought the neck and body and threw it together, you know, yeah. out of parts. He didn't bake it. You know, I mean, Brian and his dad took that. a fireplace, cut it up, and made the whole guitar. And they had no experience of making a guitar ever. And Plus so, the sounds that that guitar could right. get. And he was, he, you know, being being who he was and both engineers, they were like, well, they took the Burns pickups because they, they liked the way they sounded. But then all of the switching, they came up with themselves. So he built the tremolo. I mean, the entire guitar was hand built. It wasn't like they went and got parts. You yeah, know, the, it's all hand done. The only thing I think they said they bought were the fret wire and like some of the controls, obviously. But everything else was handmade. You know, so as a whole, to me, that guitar is just so much more like wow. I mean, he really, they really built the whole thing. It wasn't like you know. I mean, I love Ed, man, but he, you know, he went to Lynn Ellsworth and, and Charvel and said, hey, they want that body. Oh, they throw it together. Yes, maybe overall the paint scheme is more. You know, well known and all that. But oh yeah, to me, for sure. For but sure, to me, the Eddie's coolest guitar, guitar is more well known. But yeah. the coolest guitar is I got to say, Doctor yeah. Brian. Mix. I got I got to go with Brian on that one. Yeah. But that's Dr. Right, yeah. I'm gonna go with Eddie on that. Okay. What was a more important record, Sergeant Pepper's or Dark Side of the Moon? Wow. Uh, Dark Side. I think I think from a from a commercial perspective. One of the top grossing albums of all time. It's, I mean, everyone knows, I mean, arguably everyone knows the cover of Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band, but the prism is, I mean, ubiquitous in, in pop culture. It's everywhere. It had, oh God, now I'm changing my answer. <laughs> <laughs> you said influential? Yeah. Yeah. It's tough, man. That that one's that one's really really tough. Okay, who are the influ but, who are the who are the groups but, that that influence Pink Floyd though? If you're going to say compared well, to the and I, what I was just going to say, I'll, I'll go with Sgt. Pepper because it, just across the board, man. I mean, after that record came out, it, everything changed. Everything. Yeah, uh, but so from, did. Yeah. And I'm it, well, and believe um, here again, I'll say it. I'm Pink Floyd <sighs> fanatic, so I can't. You know, I mean, David Gilmore's probably my favorite player if I had to pick one. So. Uh, it's tough, but I'm going to say Sergeant Pepper just because 
between the Beach Boys and uh, just, uh, you know, the thousands of people that said, you know, as soon as I heard that record, everything changed. And even production-wise and you know, everything. I mean... Didn't Pet Sounds come out before Sgt. Pepper's? It did. It did. But so you could say you could say that the Beach Boys were pretty heavily influencing the Beatles at that time, like what they yeah. were doing. Yeah, sure. And they would say sure. that. And yeah. But man. But and so I'm <laughs> trying to think. I'm trying to think though, like, because if you're going to say more influential, you point out Sgt. Pepper's. I think you have to look at Pet Sounds, and I think those two together, because Pet Sounds influenced Sgt. Pepper's, and so. What influenced Dark Side of the Moon? What was Dark Side's pet sounds? <laughs> That's actually a pretty good question. Yeah, right? well, yeah, it is. I mean, I don't know. If to me, I don't know if there's an answer to that. David Gilmore, if you're watching yeah. this, first of please, all, please, my email's in the description. Yeah, please, please, please email yeah. me and please. tell me what the answer <laughs> yes. to that is. I'm a huge fan. Or Roger Waters. I don't mean Roger any or David. Of them. Any, any, of them. any of them. Yeah. Uh, but that's what I'm saying. I think, as a standalone piece of work, <laughs> oh man, this is another bold statement. Is is Dark Side of the Moon a more original work than Sgt. Pepper's? Knowing that Pet Sounds pretty heavily influenced Sgt. Pepper's. Mm, no, because Pet Sounds doesn't sound really sound like Sgt. Pepper's. I mean, it may be been influential in that they were trying to outdo the the Beach Boys, but the two records don't sound alike. They're, I mean, the songwriting is is not right. Not, and I I actually listened to both records recently back to back, and they're you know the Pet Sounds is a phenomenal record. Oh my record. god, yeah, it's yeah. a masterpiece. Um, yeah, absolutely brilliant record. Um, but the, the records are not really alike. No. Mm -hmm. So they when the Beatles say they were influenced, I. I think that they were influenced by the orchestrations, the the, the production, the production values, things like that. You guys know Zeppelin songs, right? A few, sure. Okay, what is the better song? Is it "What Is and What Should Never Be" or Ten Years Gone"? Wow. <laughs> mm. Oh my God. If you had to pick between those two songs, and I and I I chose those because they <laughs> they're both unbelievably uh -huh. great. No, I right. I mean, they're, they're and see, I've, they we, have a similar greatness to them too. Man, but they and don't I've sound used all my ties like. up because <laughs> that would be a that would be a tie. Man. I, well, I think you know what I'm gonna have to use my tie on this one. It's a cop out, but I I'll I'll go with um, what should never be. I'll go with ten years gone. I think. Yeah. But it's pretty close to being a tie, but those are two of the finest Zeppelin songs. Oh, there's so many, but yeah, I agree that those songs are, man, they're way up there, yeah. What sound is more unique, money for nothing or satisfaction? All right. Have you ever tried to learn money for nothing? Yes, yeah. I have. I yes. put <laughs> Butchered. butchered it. Yes. In video. I can't play it. It like <laughs> I don't to, think to, anybody can. Really. I don't think anyone can play it right. I have right. seen a video of Mason Stoops do it pretty pretty well, but that's one of those. I things. never heard Nof Noffler play it the same way. Well, that either. makes me feel better because I yeah. no. I was going to say that I've seen him live a bunch of times. He never played it the same. <laughs> that was one of those those yeah. riffs for me that I literally was sitting there like. Okay, this finger, then this <laughs> finger, then this. Yeah. Like trying to do the math on it, it's oh, impossible. Yeah. yeah, but I think that was just one of those. Like they roll tape, and he, he did it, and it was like, okay, you know, like it was it's it's not a happy unique. accident, but I mean, he just nailed it right. You know, it was like you it, could tell it's, it's just, pretty it's, unique. Yeah, um, I can't wait for the comments. Well, I can play it just fine. Yeah, right. Uh, but satisfaction is arguably one of the most influential guitarists of all time because. That was one of the first times that distortion was intentionally used. It's the Maestro FZ1. It was a massive hit. It it sort of ushered in yeah. rock and roll and the guitar as sort of the the, the forefront of that whole movement. Yeah. Uh, one of the first times a guitar pedal, a guitar effect, was ever used on a, yeah, on a right. massive right. hit. Mm -hmm. that, the Maestro FZ1. Um, and it wasn't even what he was intending to do. He was intending to simulate a horn line 
which is what the FZ1 was marketed as. Right. It was marketed as yeah. a effect to make your guitar sound like a horn, like a saxophone or a trumpet, which it, <laughs> it sounds nothing like that. Nothing like that. Yes. It's cool, though, because that's it's the pedal. You know, he wrote the riff from the pedal and, and vice versa. It's like, you know, uh, it's that iconic. So, I mean, and how could you hear that song ever without that? You know what I mean? I it's, mean, you can hear it in your head right now. Right, like, right. Okay, who's a more underrated singer, David Gilmore or Pete Townsend? Oh, Pete Townsend. David Gilmore. Dude, Gilmore's an amazing singer. He is. No, he is a great singer. He is. He's great. And he, and but who's more underrated, though? But people don't think of Gilmore as a vocalist. See, I said this in my <sighs> comfortably numb video that David Gilmore is one of is incredible. He's a very underrated singer. Yeah, a phenomenal singer. Amazing. Yeah. But Pete Townsend is a ridiculously good singer as well. And, underrated. Yeah. I mean, because the main thing was like in the Who. I mean. Between him and Daltrey, man, I mean, he could hang with Daltrey. He could. And, you know, and, and me, honestly, I like Gilmore's voice better than Water. So, but. Me too. It, yeah. You know, um, but yeah. I'm, I'll go with Townsend just because I'm, I love Townsend. And I, I, I mean, I love them both. This is another tie, but I'll go with Townsend. I'll be the, the odd man out. I think it's Gilmore, though, because if you're thinking underrated, nobody thinks of Gilmore. As a singer, everyone's that's that's where I that's what I think. I think people think of Pete Townsend as a singer, even though Gilmore is a phenomenal singer. But yeah. I never hear people talk about him as a singer as much as he, his guitar playing overshadows his singing. All right, because you know people what? talk I'll, I'll, because people I'll, talk I'll, I'll about go with guitar Gilmore. playing. Yeah, right. You know what? Whereas You're people right. don't necessarily talk about Pete Townsend's. Yeah, you're they right. talk about his songwriting okay. and and if you listen to to Gilmore now, like Rattle That Lock is is. Most recent uh, solo record, he still got it, man. Yeah, no, he could still like, sing. He can, he's still yeah. got it. Yeah. So it's, I think it's got to be Gilmore. All right, I'll, 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 yeah, I'll go Gilmore. This is actually one of the most interesting videos that I think that we've done, at least to me, because these type of thought experiments. This is the stuff I do when I always have hung out with my friends. We always right. we always just sit around and talk about these kind of dumb things like this, rating bands against each other and solos against each other and things. And so uh, you but know, we've got a series on our hands now because the yeah. comments are going to be full of like people. Well, see, I've, yeah, because I got one more. I was just going to say like who is the more influential um, guitar designer, Leo Fender or oh, like Jesus, Ted Dave. McCarty. <sighs> I think it's Leo. I mean, it has to be Leo. With the with the Telecaster, mm. it has to be Leo. I mean, I don't know, man. Mm. McCarty with three thirty five. Yeah, and, the, I mean, look, I, I love a I love SG's a, a Les Paul. All but, kinds of stuff. Yeah, yeah. that's tough. Got, dude, the Stratocaster, the Stratocaster. Yeah. When well, when people who don't know what an electric guitar is, when you ask them to think of a shape of an electric guitar, they think of the Les Paul. No, they think of a Stratocaster. <laughs> Flying V. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I do. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and I love Fenders, but come on. I think of a Les Paul. No, it's a Strat. <laughs> uh, see, well, it's weird for me. It would be it would be the Strat, but yeah. I own more Les Pauls, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if I think of you, though, Dave, I think of you playing a Strat. Yeah. Well, no, I've... I've if i got to pick one... Well, it's the tele, <laughs> tele Strat, or... I'll go with Strat just because of the versatility. Leave your comments in the comments section. Tell us what we got right, what we got wrong, and what your personal preferences are to each one of these questions. It's great having these guys back. We're going to be back yes. more often. Yes. Thank you so much for watching. That's all for now. Don't forget to subscribe, ring the bell, and leave a comment. Check out my new Quick Lessons Pro guitar course that just came out. Also, the Beato book, if you want to learn about music theory, that's how you do it. And check out my Beato Ear Training course at BeatoEarTraining.com. And don't forget, if you want to support the channel even more, think about becoming a member of the Beato Club. Thanks so much for watching.